<clears throat> okay, here we go. Uh, by the time you watch this video, you've already taken your test. I'm sure you did fine on it. Uh, I'll report back to you how you did as soon as I get it graded. Uh, 9.1 uh, is all, chapter nine is all about circles. All about circles. There's lots of formulas and circles. We start off with 9.1 with just definitions. Uh, 9.2, we get a, not formulas, but we get a couple facts about circles other than just definitions. And then from 9.3 onward, especially those double days there, 9.5, 9.6, 9.7, uh, we get a bunch of patterns and formulas. It's not confusing because if you have a book of truth, certainly confusing if you had to memorize all this. Um, I will say in the, the realm of uh, this being the most challenging chapter, it's not. However, most of the stuff, other than the first couple of vocabulary words today, is all brand new stuff. Like you didn't even know these things existed type things. Okay, uh, one quick warning. You can see there at the bottom there, uh, we're going to start 10.1 in three three weeks from now. Uh, you it, uh, Chapter 10 is all about constructions. You have to have a, um, a compass in order to uh, do this. Uh, some kids love chapter 10. It's nothing but constructions. That literally means we're going to be drawing shapes every single day. Um, constructions include a whole lot of instructions. So you need to have really good notes on that one. Um, and there's very little, let's just say, complication in terms of uh, formulas, patterns, that sort of thing. It's just simply, it's instructions how to make a shape, and can you follow those instructions? All right, enough about chapter 10, because we're on chapter 9, circles. All right, so uh, here's your homework. And here we go. So uh, 9.1 is just basic terms. Uh, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of definitions. So it's relatively an easy day, but it's got lots of vocabulary words. Um, probably a third of them you should already know, but two thirds of them are brand new. So here we go. Um, everything goes in your book of truth. So we start off with a point. So you see the little red point right there. I'm going to put that point somewhere on the page. I'm going to put it right. Oh, here's fine. So I'm going to put the point right there. And then I'm, from that point, I'm going to measure a certain distance to the right of that point and make another point. So I measured from red a certain distance. And I made a new point there, that black one. Now I'm going to... Um, measure that distance and repeat that same process. That same distance, I'm going to measure now to the left of the red dot. So I'm going to put a, a black dot there. And then I'm going to put a uh, same distance. I'm going to put it straight down, then straight up, and then off to the side. But I'm not changing the distance. Each time I'm doing the same exact distance over and over and over and over and over again. In fact, I'm going to do it. You can kind of guess where this is going. I'm going to go and do this an infinite amount of times, and I make a shape. Now, the shape is just that black curve right there. The shape is not the center, not the outside, not the inside. It's just the black part of that shape. So the black part of that shape clearly is a circle. So the question is, what's the definition of a circle? So the definition of a circle, let's see, well, how did we make that shape? Uh, we started with a given point. That was the red one. And then we measured a distance and we repeated that. Now, the one thing we made sure of was we made sure that we put all the points on the same plane. And that would be the same plane as the red one. So if you have the set of all points, fancy words for the collection of all the points, that are equidistant from that red given point, you make what we call a circle. So that's our first definition, a circle. It's a set of all points in a plane, you gotta be on the flat surface, the same distance from a given point on that plane. All right, um, I'm gonna move on, but obviously you can pause it and, and write that down. All right, so now we know what a circle is. Now, I'll just say this. These slides would be very boring if I didn't make my circles have colored on the inside. But be careful. The blue part of that circle is not part of the circle. The circle isn't even A. The circle is the black curved line that contains the blue and contains the point A. So yes, I will make many of my circles be colorful, but the color is not part of the circle. The circle is just the curved portion. Uh, if we were to include the colored portion, we would call this a disc.
but we're just dealing with circles, so just the black portion. So we call this circle A, and we do have a symbol for it. You can probably guess if it's a circle, it's going to be a circle symbol. Uh, we do put a dot there. Uh, uh, trivia here, that's also the symbol uh, for the sun. So uh, the planets and, and our sun have symbols. We represent them in astronomy, and, well, that's the symbol for sun. Okay, so that's just trivia. All right, so we're going to take a circle. You may remember this word, or you may not. I'd say that, oh, about 10 to 15 percent of the students remember this word, and for the rest of them, they either forgot it or they've never encountered this word before. So I'm going to take a circle. Remember, it's not the yellow part. It's the black part. I'm going to take that circle, and I'm going to put two points on the circle, unnamed. It doesn't matter their names. Uh, I'm going to put two points on those circle, and I'm going to play connect the dots. The shape I just made, that red part right there, has a fancy name for it. So if you remember, if you've been taught this before, you might remember it. If not, we're going to define that as a chord, C-H-O-R-D, chord. So a chord is a segment whose endpoints are on a circle. Any two points on a circle, if you play connect the dots, you make a chord. All right, so here we go. Uh, if you were in class, I would ask you the question, name the chords that you see. So pause it, name them, and then check. So the chords are, well, let's see, a chord's got to be a segment, and it's got to connect two points on the circle. So I'm looking on the circle, the black part. i got lots of points. i got points F, E, A, G, C. But the ones that are connected are A, C, and F, G. So on circle X, the chords are A, C, but I could have written that as C, A, and F, G, or G, F. There's two chords. E, X is not a chord because there's only one point on the circle. We'll get to what EX is, and you probably already know uh, here in a second. So those are the chords. Want to do that again, or you got it? Well, if you want to do it again, pause the video. Okay, so the chords here are AB and DB. And remember, those can be written either way. Now, since there's segments, remember, we've got to put the segment symbol over the top. Okay, we got chords. Cool. All right. You may have noticed that one of those last chords there kind of looked familiar. And that was the chord that when you made the chord, chord, it actually went through the middle of the circle, that point Z right there. So that is absolutely a chord by definition. It connects two points on a circle, but it goes through the middle, so it gets a special name. Hopefully you know this one. This is the definition of a diameter. So a di diameter is a chord that passes through the center of a circle. Okay, now that my definitions today. So same drill as always. I'm going to introduce you to a sh uh, new shape. Then you're going to do two slides where you just name what you see. All right. So name the diameter there. That's correct. That is LK. I'm assuming you got that right. All right. Uh, name the diameter or diameters. Well, AB is not a diameter. It's a chord, but it doesn't go to the center. So the only diameter there is DB or BD. Next shape. Yeah. Play connect the dots. What do you think we just made there? Uh, this is the only tricky one, and it's not truly tricky. It's just how you name it. All right. So if you connect the center of a circle to a point on the circle, we call that a radius. Uh, if there's more than one radius, uh, plural for that is radii. So the definition of a radius is a segment that has one endpoint on the circle. That's the big black dot there. And the other one is the center of the circle. I don't like this definition simply because it gives you the impression that you go from the circle to the center, when in fact, be careful on this one, when you name this thing, it must go from center to the circle itself. In other words, here we go, name the radii that you see right here. Uh, it has to start at the center. So the center is G. So the, all the radii that you see here are GB. G E and G D. Notice they all start with G because G is the center. All right, one last time. Name the radii. My dot there doesn't look like it's in the center. I got to change that for next year. All right, so that would be, uh, let's see, I got to start the center. So X D, X B, and X C. Those are the radii. And notice they are segments, so they get the segment uh, symbol over the top of them. All right, so those are all the terms that you probably have encountered before. Maybe not chord, but I, I know I teach chord when I teach uh, uh, pre-algebra. Uh, but these, the, the following ones are all going to be new. So here we go. 
So it looks like I'm about to make a chord. If I connect those uh, two big black dots in the circle, I would in fact make a chord, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to make a line that goes through those two points. So it's not a segment, it's a line and it gets a special name and its name. I'll just go ahead and give this one to you. This is called a secant, S-E-C-A-N-T. So a secant is a, is a line that contains the chord of a circle. Secant is a Latin word. It means sacare, and it means to cut. And that kind of makes sense, given the shape. All right, so that's a secant. It turns out in this chapter, boy, will we be using secants. Uh, starting tomorrow, you're going to start to see secants. And we get lots of shapes with circles that use secants. All right, so name the secant. Let's see, a secant has to be a line. Well, there's only two lines there, AC and DB. Now, you could have said uh, CA or uh, BD, but just different different names. All right. Uh, last time, how many secants do you see? Well, there's only one line there, so it has to be AB. AB is your only secant. All right. Marching through this material very quickly because it's just definitions. All right. See, oh, it looks like I'm going to draw a radius here, but I'm not going to draw a radius. I'm going to draw a line or maybe a segment or array that touches the circle only at point D. Imagine that. It's a segment, a line, or a ray that only touches the circle at point D. And we give that a name. And that name we have actually seen before last chapter, except the, the word has a second meaning in the mathematics. Uh, this line is called a tangent. And it's kind of like in the English a language usage of the word tangent um, goes off in one direction uh, away from the shape, except that it could be a line. So it goes in two directions. So that kind of falls a little flat there, but in mathematical sense, it just means that a line that a line segment or ray that touches a circle in one spot. Uh, another, another uh, a further part of this definition would be that it can't go to the inside. So even though let's see a uh, radius touches the circle in one spot, uh, it's on the inside. So ta tangents never make it to the inside of a circle. Uh, comes from the uh, Latin word tangere or tangere, meaning to touch. All right, uh, where it touches the circle actually gets a name itself as well. And that's called the, as you would guess, the point of tangency. The previous shape was a secant a line that goes through two points on a circle, and this is a tangent that only touches a circle in one spot. And it turns out, for this chapter, all the formulas and shapes that we get will be a combination of secants and tangents. Some will be just secants, some will be just tangents, and some will be a combination of secants and tangents. We'll get our first couple ones tomorrow, next class, and then they just follow one after the other. So secants and tangents are important. All right, name the tangent, line, segment, array, that only touches the circle in one spot. Well, well, there's only one there, and that would be line L. Remember, we can name lines by a cursive letter. That one's not cursive. Um, the program that I use, this is how it literally writes Ls. Uh, but a more cursive L is the one that you're more likely to encounter in a math book. All right, this is a tricky question because it just means you got to pay attention to the definition of just the tangent. This is only for tangents. Tangents are not necessarily just lines that touch the circle in one spot. They're lines, they're segments, and there's rays. So yes, EF is a tangent, but so is segment EF. So is ray EF. So is ray CF. So is ray CE. There, any line, segment, or um, ray that touches the circle in one spot can be called a tangent. Coming at you fast and furious today. All right, sphere. Uh, we know what the word sphere means. Maybe not mathematically, but we know what a sphere is. Um, you're going to have to draw a few spheres. So let's see, how do you draw spheres? You start off with a circle around the center of the circle, horizontal or vertical. You're going to draw not a circle, but you're going to draw an ellipse. That's a squash circle. You'll learn about ellipses more in detail when you get to algebra two and pre-calculus. All right, uh, now this is a three-dimensional object, so we wouldn't see the back of this shape. So therefore, technically, we need to make the back of that ellipse dashed or, or dotted, uh, and that's how we're going to draw spheres. 
All right, so let's get to the definition of a sphere. So if a circle is a collection of points on a plane that are equidistant from a given point, we just erase the word plane and we allow any point that is equidistant from a given point, right, would make a sphere. Think about that. If I don't restrict myself to a flat surface and I can create any point that's equidistant from a given point, well, then you would make a three-dimensional sphere. Well, I, that's kind of the same three dimensions. Spheres are three dimensions. Okay. All right. Quick note, all the terms that we've used for circles also apply to spheres. So let me test you. Here we go. I got a sphere. That would be the, well, it's labeled the center of the sphere. How about this thing, this red line? That would be a, that's correct. That would be a diameter. I'm assuming you got that right. Uh, blue dotted line would be a, hopefully you got that one, uh, two points on the sphere. And remember, the sphere is not the middle of the sphere. It's just the surface. Uh, if I play connect the dots to those two points, in other words, I'm playing connect the dot here, you have now made, that's right, you've made a secant. And then uh, uh, one thing I want to point out on the secant. So it's really hard to tell since we're drawing this in two dimensions. Are those two points in front of the, or on the front of the sphere, on the back of the sphere? Is one on the front, one on the back? You can tell all that information from the dashed or dotted line. Notice the point on the left there. It's solid up until the point. Well, that would mean that that point is on the front of the sphere. Then we go dash, 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 dash. Then we go to a point. And then it goes dash, dash, dash to the end of the circle that made the sphere. Therefore, that second point, the point on the right there, is on the back of the sphere. Yeah, drawing things in two, drawing three dimensional things in two dimensions can definitely lead to issues. All right, the last thing that's on a circle that's also on a sphere, one point and a line that only touches that point in one or touches that sphere in one point, that would be a tangent to a sphere. All right, cool. So usually I go around the room and I ask kids, what do you see here? And some kid says, I see a sphere. I say, what's the name of that sphere? So that is sphere O. And then I say, what else do you see? And then somebody says, oh, I see a radius. And I say, name the radii of that sphere. So that would be O, D, O, A, and O, B. And I say, what else do you see? And somebody says, I see a tangent to that sphere. That would be tangent A, T. And the point of tangent C would be A. And then other kids say, I see a chord. I see chord DB. Or that's diameter DB. It's all the same. Uh, and then lastly, somebody says, I see a secant CB. So those are all the things that exist on that sphere. Yeah, the, the, the words just keep coming. Just lots and lots and lots of vocabulary words. So a couple more. All right. So uh, the first result of the chapter up to now has just been definitions. Now, this is technically a definition, but is a result. So I've got two circles there. I have two radii there, A, B, and C, D. So what would you think if A, B is congruent to C, D? Pause the video and give that a thought. Let's see. If A, B is congruent to C, D, that means their measurements are the same. And since circles are defined by a distance from a center point, and since on these two circles those that distance is the same, then those two circles must be congruent. So these are called congruent circles. And this also applies to spheres as well, too. So congruent spheres or congruent circles or circles or spheres that have congruent radii. Remember, from, to prove that two triangles are congruent, we got five different ways, SSS, SAS, so forth and so on. But to prove that two circles are congruent, you just got to prove that their radii are congruent. So we just need one thing. As always, I'm moving on, but you can pause. Okay, next one. Oh, this one hurts my eyes just looking at this. Uh, it looks like we got a circle within a circle within a circle within a circle within a circle. I left off a few there. Uh, let's see. Circles are defined by their center. And if you notice, all of these circles share a common center. And these get a special name. I'm probably sure you've heard of this. You just probably can't think of what the name of this. These are called concentric circles, kind of like an archery target. Circles that lie in the same plane that have the same center. Well, if we have concentric circles, certainly we must have concentric 
spheres. Ooh, that's hard to draw. So concentric spheres, same idea as concentric circles. All right. Uh, now we got a few challenging vocabulary words. Uh, it is a video. You can hear this multiple times. So make sure you fully understand these words. All right. Uh, here we go. All right. So think about this. I got two shapes here. I got a square and nested really snugly inside that square is a circle. Think about this one. Now I have a circle and nested inside of that circle is a rectangle. So the thing on the inside, the one on the left, the circle, the one on the right, a rectangle. Those things on the inside, two shapes, one thing on the inside, get names. And that name is, drum roll, inscribed. The thing on the inside, right? When a shape is in the same plane and fits snugly inside another. So that one on the left there, we would say is a circle inscribed in a square. And the one on the right there, that is a rectangle inscribed in a circle. So it's describing the shape that you see on the inside. All right, I would pause the video, write this down. Now, as you could probably imagine, we could probably describe the thing on the outside. So the second word, oh, if the thing on the inside is called an inscribe, wouldn't it make sense if the thing on the outside is called the outscribe? But no, nobody made us happy with this one. They came up with a really strange word, right? Pro tip, remember the thing on the inside is called the uh, inscribe portion. So we all, all right there, we have inscribe polygons, inscribe triangle, inscribe uh, rectangle, inscribe uh, uh, pentagon. And on the one there on the right, those those are all inscribed circles. So now for the weird one. All right. So if I want to describe the thing on the outside, the one on the left there, I want to describe the square. The one on the right side, the circle. The thing that, I don't know, touches the thing on the inside uh, and fits snugly on the outside. It's not called outscribed. It's called circumscribed. And that's when a shape touches all the vertices of another and doesn't cut it. Now, there are no vertices of a circle, so it's the thing that snugly fits the circle on the outside. For polygons, the one on the right there, that circle touches all the vertices of the uh, rectangle. Now, it doesn't have to be a circle. It could be any shape. It just has to touch all the, the vertices there. Okay, so we have inscribed the thing on the inside, circumscribed the thing on the outside. So this is a square that circumscribes a circle. Talk about the thing on the outside. This is a circle that circumscribes a rectangle. So circumscribe is the thing on the outside. Inscribed is the thing on the inside. On the left there, those are circumscribed polygons, right? Uh, a triangle circumscribes a circle. Uh, a square circumscribes a circle, a uh, pentagon circumscribes a circle, a hexagon circumscribes a circle. And then on the right there, those are all circles circumscribing polygons. And that's it, right? Lots and lots and lots. Doesn't feel like we accomplished much, much other than write things in our book of truth. Uh, the key ones there are the uh, secant and the tangent. Those are the ones going forward that we will use. I guess radius and diameter as well, too. Those are the ones that we're going to use um, uh, the most. All right. As always, if you have any questions, send them to me. Uh, I will try my darndest to get an answer to you either that day, certainly within, uh, um, you know, uh, if you send it to me at, uh, in the evening, I don't get to it. I'll give you a response by the morning, uh, by the time you get up and want to watch something. And, and I'll be giving those responses to you uh, as a in, in video form. Hopefully that's working out. If there's any technical issues, make sure you tell me about them so I can fix them. And yeah, that's, uh, that's it.